the 222 roll lock is possibly the biggest change to Overwatch ever. In this new format, the GOATS meta is over and the game will take a radical step away from a MOBA playstyle to reintroduce old fashioned head click and FPS skill in a big way. In this transition, we can expect some teams to rise in power and some to fall. Could the NWAG cell be big winners in this new format? That's what we're gonna discuss here today. Memories tend to not last long in esports, but for those who do think back to the inaugural season, you may remember the staggering dominance NYXL had. The season had 40 games, not a mere 28 like we have now, and in season 1, the NYXL racked up a jaw-dropping 34 and 6 record with a plus 83 map differential. Not to mention half of those losses came in stage 4 alone. For some perspective, the Titans are ranked number 1 right now, but even if they completed stage 4 without dropping a single map, they'd still be one map short of NYXL's regular season run. Unless the league randomly started scheduling more matches in a season, that record may hold forever. Fans may have forgotten how dominant that regular season streak was, and only remembered the final hot streak of teams going into a meta swap right in time for the playoffs. But if you think about it, that makes this stage 4 format shift look quite similar to last year. Could NYXL benefit from this change? The first thing on everybody's mind is the damage roll, something we barely got to see in Season 2. There's many players across the league who have been waiting in the wings ready to prove themselves. Now with them being guaranteed picks moving forward, how does NYXL stack up? The first player we must highlight is Sabiolbi, whose biggest strength will be front and center in this new meta. It's easy to forget because in GOATS, the concept of dueling, aka just taking a straight up 1v1, isolating either your mirror or counter to outplay them, all that playstyle largely stopped existing, as you always had the option to just pick a tankier hero or comp to opt out of DPS duels. But that's not how last year played like, and we're going to see that gameplay come back in a big way in Stage 4. For the majority of last year, there was no shortcut for avoiding duels. SBB could take them with impunity and had a reputation for being the best Tracer duelist in the league. He cemented his dominance after he and the team shut down the perfect stage of the Boston Uprising in the Stage 3 Finals. Although some were hailing Striker the best Tracer in the league, Sabiolbi had the last laugh. I'm a best tracer in the world. All right. But SBB's skill set isn't just geared for Tracer, he has been playing Overwatch as a high-level pro since 2016, and adapted to play whatever hero is necessary for the meta. But whoever he mains come Stage 4, his ability to win 1v1s reliably with deliberate control will be something to look out for. Next up is the new recruit Nene, who has put in a strong performance on Zarya, but was more famous for his role on other damage heroes in Contenders. We've already had the chance to see Nene's incredible hitscan aim in Stage 3, he's so good that when we start to add these players together, you start to see the embarrassment of riches at NYXL's disposal. Next up is Big Boss Pine. Pine was the most terrifying substitute a team could ever see walk onto the stage last year, bringing a level of aim skill mere mortals dream of and a level of aggression that only he can make work. Pine is the type of X-Factor wildcard that can be simply too much to handle. His skill has taken over games by himself, and it's this type of high peak performance threat that a lot of teams struggle to find a player they can match up on him. I mean, who really wants to cover the Big Boss, right? Right? Between these three players, it's safe to say any type of hitscan hero will be played to an elite level by one of them, if not all three, let's be honest. And as if it wasn't scary enough, the last two DPS, yes, the NYXL have five, are Libro and Flower on the projectile flex rolls. Libro originally played for the theory crafting powerhouse meta Athena back in the days of Apex, and will be a force when adapting to the chaos that will be the stage four meta. There's few players in the league who can perform as highly as Libro can across this many heroes. Genji, Farah, Hanzo, Junkrat, Mei, you name it, he plays it. With the meta in flux, look to Libero to be the Swiss army knife, allowing for a lot of strategic diversity that many other teams can't compete with. Last up is Flower, the player that many would have said was the best in the entire world in 2017. He's sadly been stuck in Brig Jail since then, getting some reps in in the tier 2 scene, but with DPS locked in place for stage 4, it could finally be time to see Flower bloom. Okay, sorry, I had to go for that one. Now let's talk about tank line. Mato and Mecco didn't struggle in the tank meta that we just left, but are more likely to play even better into the next meta. Why is that? Well, it's because Mato is possibly the least resource intensive tank in the entire league. His play is precise, making the most space possible without being too greedy with resources, which will be a playstyle that comes leaping back into Overwatch. We might be used to the max brawl team comp of goats, enabling Ryan to swing with reckless abandon, 
Raiden with two off tanks and three healers propping him up, but now Overwatch returns to a resource light metagame where you're much more required to individually manage your own tank play without needing to be bailed out. There's simply less cooldowns to go around, meaning Mano will feel right at home. This is exactly how Mano and Mecho play together. The patented style of NYXL, playing slow and reactive, would not be possible if the tank line weren't as elite with their positioning, and it's with their play that the rest of the roster will be able to shine. Remember, more damage will be in the game overall. I mean, the pros finally have to pick those heroes, right? Meaning that tanks that aren't able to manage their health as well and are too easily shot down will crumble in spots where Mano and Mecho hold up strong. In GOATS, it was difficult to play too passive as you had to go aggressive a lot of the time, whereas in most 2-2-2 metas, controlling the fight carefully to set up DPS angles is far more effective, meaning Mano and Mecho should be right at home enabling their team to excel in 2 2 2. Last but certainly not least is the NYXL's backline. What really needs to be said here? There's a reason why they immortalized Jonak with the Zenyatta skin in the game. In GOAT's meta, it was harder for the flex support to shine outside of stat cards, whereas in a meta where the enemy must pick squishy characters for Jonak to eliminate, he's got a chance to show off his talent yet again. Much like Sabiobi, Jonak is a master at duels from his position, striking fear in the enemies who dare to assume he's just a support. I mean, how many times have we seen Jonak turn a fight back by hitting so many shots? Too many times to count. That level of skill wasn't as obvious in the GOAT's meta because of how reliant it was on ultimates and cooldowns, but now Jonak Jonak's enemies won't have the benefit of picking characters with a natural shield on them instead of a difficult to play DPS. Jonak's coming for you DPS players, you better bring your A game, because he certainly is. And it's an absolute travesty that I have to somehow mention one of these players last, but Animo, alongside Jonak, whether it be on his Mercy pick, Lucio, or whatever the meta needs, Animo's on the spot, given the peel and protection for Jonak, and controlling teamfights with his superb positioning, timing, and game sense. With all this said, you've got the arguments laid out in front of you. What do you think? Will NYXL be the best 222 Roll Lock team? Let us know in the comments section down below.